guess we'll go ahead and uh, open the service tonight. Um, we'll open with any uh, prayer requests or any testimonies anybody might have. Yeah, Nathan. Uh, I have a text message from Tim about prayer for the family. Okay. Okay. Prayer for Tim and his family and their family. Yeah, I'd like prayer for Joe because I know he's working through this temp agency and gets old and he found another one. And I, he was working for Los Fargo's, but that's just temporary and it's like, we'll just please get a temp agency that doesn't work. It's like, he hates it and I get it. It drives me nuts because I can't know whether they're going to do this and the follow me and get another follow It's like, hopefully this is you know good enough. They'll put you on a main job after that. I'm hoping because I, I know it's more horrible to go through. Okay, so pray for Joe. So, and just pray for me to remember to get, <laughs> pray the kabusha and us, us memories that <laughs> we can't be bad. Ah, and yeah. don't like step around and I'm not the humble bee as I'm supposed to be, but uh, I guess we all get buzzed off and we're not quite focused. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. Yes. I had a testimony of praise. It's a little bit long. Sure. I can do Sure, sure. Um, it starts out with we're planning to go to the wedding up in North Dakota that was October 14th. And the Friday before that, we had to run home and do something. So my husband came and picked me up to work and we went home real quick. And as we're driving home, the check engine light comes on in the truck. It's a 2010. Silverado, and it's like, oh man. So we stopped in and they read the code, and it was something with the fuel system. We had to get fixed before we left to drive it north. Mm -hmm. Oh man, so they got us in Tuesday. We're leaving at 6 o'clock Thursday morning. They came back that it was going to be over $600 to fix that, plus. There were transmission problems and a battery and fuel system problems. And I was just like, oh gosh, <laughs> why now? You know, and we ended up buying a new truck because it was too, there was so much wrong with this one, we bought a new one. Got a great deal, but it's still a hundred dollars more a month. And we're going, oh. And so, how we were sitting there that night talking about it, and he's going, why now? And I hear in my spirit, what day is tomorrow? And my answer was October 11th, which is the key to this story. October 11th. We'll jump back to 2013. We'll jump back to October 10th of 2013. I had my first new car in my life. My husband bought it. was a lease. And we've been thinking, how in the world are we going to get enough money for another down payment on a lease when we have to turn this one in and you don't get any money back for it? Not worried about it. Just one of those things that we've got to start saving. I got a call from Carl Chevrolet out of the blue, unsolicited, that said, hey, we've got a really good deal on Equinoxes right now. We can probably get you into a new one for no one to get. Worked it out <clears throat> October 11th of 2013. I got a new car. Another new to me car. I went from a 2011 to a 2014. It had the backup camera that I wanted. And I, I was so excited. And the guy that sold it to us is somebody that we bought now from for several times, but he's a Christian. And it occurs to me that that was the 18th anniversary of my divorce from my first husband of 18 years. Mm -hmm. And the Lord provided a new car. No money down, four years newer, same amount of money, just to bless us. Mm -hmm. And that he, re he remembers mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 
And so here we are, it didn't jump up to, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and Holly's going, why now? And the Lord says, what day is it? tomorrow? And I said, it's October 11th. He goes, it is my good pleasure to bless you. Yeah. And give um, you good gifts. Yes. He goes, I know what I walked you through to get you out of Amen. that marriage. And I remember, mm-hmm. and I bless you. Glory. Glory. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. You said it was a, a testimony and told somebody at work, and they go, why a car? Why not? Why another car? Because they can't. That's what you needed, right? Yeah, that's what you needed at the time you needed I, it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's not what I asked for. I wasn't. In both cases, I was not looking for it, and I was not thinking about that day. But God doesn't forget. Yeah. With everything going on in the world and, and North Korea and floods and hurricanes, and he remembers the anniversary of my divorce. It just it blows me away and it's so sweet. Just huge praise. Amen. Praise to his love and graciousness and goodness. Every single one of our tears are precious to him. He knows the number of hairs in our head. We are tattooed in the palms of his hand. We are so precious to him, every single one of us. And it's just amazing that when we're aware and we're open to the Spirit, he reminds us that he remembers. He shows us in unexpected ways that he cares and he does remember. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's an awesome testimony. Anyone else any needs or anything going on that we need to pray about tonight? All right, well, let's stand and let's go to the Lord. Let's invite him in here tonight to be part of the service. And praise God. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Father, we just bless you tonight. Thank oh, we thank you that you are good, Lord. We thank you that you pour out your love for us every single day, Lord. That we would have the eyes to see as you bless us and the ears to hear and the heart to receive. To be grateful, Lord. A grateful heart is continually blessed, Lord. Let us look for the blessings in this life. Let us let go of the things that try to hold us back or discourage us, Lord. Let us focus on you and your blessings, Lord. That you, oh Lord, every day, Lord, every day, it's a new opportunity to know you more. Jesus. Right now we lift up the needs of this church before you, Lord. Tim and Leah and their family, Lord, we lift them up to you, whatever the need is, whatever the situation, Lord, that you let them know that they are precious, that they are loved, and that you are with them, that you are for them. And we pray for for James's friend, Lord, that he would be provided the right job at the right time, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for Tracy's testimony of your goodness and your grace, Lord. We thank you for the healing, Lord, the testimony of your grace, of forgiveness, that is part of her life and her testimony in knowing you, Lord. And tonight, Lord, we come into your presence. We come into the house of the Lord. We come to this house of prayer. We come seeking, Lord. We come hungry, Lord. We come thirsty. We come because we want to know you more, Lord. We want to be transformed in our minds by the hearing of your word. We want to gather together to worship and praise you and say that you are worthy. We want to link arms with one another and stand firm, Lord, as we run this race day after day after day. Let us run and not be weary, Lord. And let us focus on the prize that lies ahead, Lord. Let us not be distracted to the right and the left, Lord, but be focused and purposeful. As your word is a lamp unto our feet, Lord, show us the next step. Give your people wisdom and vision, Lord direction and purpose, Lord. As your church rises up in power and in glory to be about your work, Lord. Jesus, we love you tonight, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that this is the day that you have made, Lord. And we will rejoice and we are glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Be with us for the remainder of this service.
So we have lots of announcements. Uh, if you brought a cell phone with you tonight, just a reminder to turn it off until after the service. Um, November. <laughs> The uh, yeah. fr Friday, November something or other, is the Eastern Cape House of Prayer. Uh, is it the 10th, maybe? I think the 10th is right, maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, anyway, second, second Friday. Uh, first, second, third, be the 10th. November 10th. Friday, November 10th. This is the 10th. Yep, yeah. Friday, November 10th. Uh, favorite night of the month. Uh, do you have anything, any thoughts? You know, that's... Um. I, I know all the snowflakes are going to be crying at the sky uh, at the anniversary of the uh, election. So let's <laughs> first of all pray for them to see the Lord when they look to the sky and cry. Mm -hmm. um, but now we, we're, we're going through uh, a path right now that, so that the enemy is just throwing things uh, just to try to trip up the focus and the goal of what he has called us to do. And, just to, to keep focused on what he wants, and just for keener ears and, and sharper eyes and the spirit realm, and, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a good time. We're, we're going to press through. We're going to press through. And then, I'm reminded. I don't know if um, I don't know if we ever shared what happened last month, but um, in October there were a bunch of words that came. We gathered together at prayer at the end. We take communion together and we pray together, and it's, it's become awesome. a really powerful, become a really powerful time together. <laughs> and um, uh, one of the one of the I don't know, I get all sorts of prophetic words through Elijah List and various sources, but one of the things that struck me was that it's, it's, it's Rosh Hashanah right now, which is Jewish New Year. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had a bunch of powerful words for us as a, as a body for the mm -hmm. 2017 calendar year. Mm -hmm. And I feel like those are still yet to come. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, well, you know, it's a Jewish New Year, Lord. And, but I feel like there's an acceleration happening. Exactly. Um, because the Lord is going to fulfill his promises to us. Yeah. And one of the most powerful things that I've read that I actually kind of agreed with for once in my spirit um, was about the, these portals and the doors to blessings are going to come from humble doors, not for exalted doors. Because we always think about the next level as being exalted up, but the Lord says the next level will require much humility. And so I just encourage everybody to look through those humble doors. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so, you know, and so it, and it just, it really struck me. Um, and I felt like there was a portal here that night when we were praying, and I, I had everybody take a step forward. <laughs> so I really felt like there's a there's a portal here. Yeah. We have to be humble and um, come before Him with humility to receive it. But Amen. Be, be looking for those humble ones. A lot of things that were talked about that night, and Lord directed that night within 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. All the ministries around the world were repeating the same thing. Yeah. Or being said, the same you go. Yeah. So, but there were a ton of affirmations. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so. yeah, powerful. I'm getting excited. We're getting ready to next week is November, so um, I'm making t-shirts. I'm designing t-shirts. Um, so I'm having fun. I'm crafting my, my hands off, and my husband's helping me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for being a, a helpful. Um, Saturday, November 11th, um, any of the ladies here tonight, any of the gentlemen, uh, there's postcards in the back to invite the ladies in your life. Um, we're going to start at 10 a.m. with worship, and then we're going to have some uh, wonderful speakers in the morning, have um, a lunch downstairs, and then we're going to have craft time afterwards, just in time of fellowship, and make some fun uh, craft items. So it'll be a great time together. And if that wasn't enough, the following Sunday we're going to be doing a potluck like after, a pot blessing is what we call it. <laughs> it would be a soup, soup, soup lunch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, after the service, everybody will bring uh, soups or breads or sandwiches or desserts. We'll have a sign-up sheet in the back uh, for everybody to kind of sign up. And I do believe that's borscht, so if somebody would like to bring some borscht, I personally like it. Kind of. <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> Ron, do you want to come take a, an offering for us tonight, please?
Lord, we bless you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your ever-present help in the time of trouble. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your great love, for your mercy, and for your grace. And most importantly, Lord, we thank you that you have saved us and delivered us and kept us under the protecting arms you are a good God great and a mighty God and for you Lord we are forever and eternally grateful and we bless your name tonight the name that is above every name blessed be the name of the Lord praise God Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. And Lord, we thank you for the blessings that are coming to us because of your goodness, because you are a loving Father who gives good gifts to his children. 
and you know us so intimately, Lord, each one of us, as though we were the only child. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank all of you for sharing your testimonies and prayer requests. Thank you, Mike, and the abbreviated worship team. Praise the Lord. That's good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sally's not here tonight. She, our youngest daughter who lives in Prairie City, had just had a baby here a couple months ago, and she wasn't feeling well today, so Sally was in the middle of making pepper jelly. It's really good. It doesn't sound good, but it really is. It's finishing up the garden, and uh, she's just getting started in that, and Allison called, and so she had to go to Prairie City to pick up her older kids that were in school, which made everything else go on hold, so then she had to come back and go back to the peppers, and so here I am all by myself, praise the Lord, but the reward is to come, I'll have pepper jelly, so praise God. <laughs> Anyway, God bless all of you. I was thinking about that today. My daughter, I remember when the kids were small, all of you know this, you, you've been there, but um, sometimes she gets kind of paranoid because she knows I'm kind of a, I can be a little bit compulsive about things. I mean, and uh, the house is kind of, not dirty, but you know, just when well, you got kids, right? You know, I mean, they're seven, six, five, four, and then this little baby. And I just told her, I said, you know, Allison, that cleaning house with when kids are still at home, you know, growing up, it's like shoveling in the drive while it's still snowing. <laughs> you learn, you, you learn after a while, you just, just wait, you know, because no point, you just, there's no end to it, praise the Lord. But anyway, God bless all of you, appreciate you being here tonight, taking time out of your week to worship the Lord and be a part of this service, praise the Lord, so. If you're ready, Mike, we'll, we'll begin at Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and I want to uh, start with uh, verses 8 through 11. Ecclesiastes 7, verses 8 through 11. Praise the Lord. God is so good and faithful. 7, 8 through 11? Yes. Yes, please. <clears throat> The end of a thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry. Well, this is what will happen. You'll, okay, here we go. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For you do not inquire wisely concerning this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance and profitable to those who see the sun. Drop down to verse 29. <clears throat> Truly, this only I have found, that God made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. And now let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Galatians 3, 11 and 12. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Now verse 23. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to give people something to believe. That's what the real gospel does. It makes believers. And when you become a believer, you'll act out of what you believe. I mentioned uh, Sunday, I believe it was, a quote from uh, Albert Einstein, who, by the way, uh, I just saw in the news today, uh, you know, most of you know he was a believer, but not like us. He was a Jewish uh, believer, and in fact, he started a, uh, a college in, in uh, Israel before he passed away. But anyway, uh, he had uh, when he got the Nobel Prize, he didn't have any money, and he was staying in a hotel waiting, and, he, and the, one of the 
uh, bellboys or someone brought him up the telegram saying that he had won the Nobel Prize. Well, he didn't have any money to tip the kid. So he wrote him a little note, and in the note it said something about uh, humility is better than you know puffing yourself up. I don't remember the exact words, but anyway, words to that effect, and gave it to the young man, and he said, hopefully someday this will be worth some money. Well, this man, this bellboy, his nephew just auctioned off that note for a million seven hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Incredible, right? Quite a tip. But anyhow, uh, Einstein said that there are two ways to live. You can live as if there, nothing is a miracle, or you can live as though everything is a miracle. And as Christians, that's the way we have to look at things, I think, anyway. That's, that's my approach. And what I'm saying is, if you believe you are the righteousness of God, you'll act it. Mm -hmm. Amen? The just will live by faith. And that's what we have to do. We have to live by faith. Because we know, we look in the mirror, we know our lives are not perfect, and we make mistakes, and we do foolish things sometimes. But in the eyes of God, we are righteous. We are holy. We are sanctified. We're set apart. We're, we're, we're children of God. And so we have to live that by faith. Praise the Lord. And what really needs changing then, and that, with that idea in mind, is our belief system. Mm -hmm. The way we think, the way we believe about things. Ephesians 4, verses 29 through 32. Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. Praise the Lord. And if you can go to just the regular King James, Mike, it would be helpful to me because I, I get confused with my notes sometimes when I don't see what I'm thinking. But he says corrupt, okay? Not that there's anything wrong with the New King James Version. I'm just saying I'm, that's not where I'm coming from right now. But we, when we think of corrupt, you know, uh, we think we're talking about curse words. Now, I spent some time in the Marine Corps, and believe me, there was a time when I knew. I knew. I, I actually made words. I created curse words, praise the Lord. But here he's not, he's not dealing with curse words, but he's dealing with us about cursing. Right. And there is a difference, praise the Lord. Every time you focus on the law, on, on the religious way of looking at things, you're putting yourself or you're putting somebody else under the curse. And you're cursing them. Setting yourself and others up for failure. Praise the Lord. Galatians 3, verses 10 through 13. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live by them, or in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Praise the Lord. So wonder, uh, in my mind, there's no wonder then that, that so many Christians are defeated. That so many Christians are discouraged and uh, depressed, in fact. Praise the Lord. Their faith is shut up. It's, it's stifled. Amen. It's stifled because they look at the law and say, I can't do this. And it, it puts burdens on them. And as we just read, it shuts up faith. The law is not of faith. Praise the Lord. And that's what, no wonder that we don't see the miracles that we hope for, that the Bible promises us. Amen. That is corrupt communication. And it grieves the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. It's the worst kind of cursing. Because it keeps people from 
receiving the promises of God, from receiving their miracles, from receiving their blessings, because they don't feel qualified. Because I'm not able to keep the law perfectly, therefore God won't bless me. I was thinking of your testimony tonight. Now, obviously this is no... It was, I'm not saying anything negative about you, but I'm just saying I would guess that if you're a normal human being, good Christian, you've made some mistakes over the last 10 years. You probably lost your temper maybe, or you got a little angry or said something, or, you know, you know just stuff. And when that happens, if you're thinking in terms of the law, you disqualify yourself for the blessing. Because I'm not worthy, you know, I did this bad thing, I said this thing, I had that thought, you know. And so now, you know, God can't bless me because I've been a bad girl, you know, or a bad boy. That's the curse we're talking about here. We curse ourselves and we curse others and we, we nullify the God's desire to bless us and literally to spoil us. Because that's what He likes to do. And a lot of times He can't give us those things that we desire, that our heart wants... Because we negate His ability to give it to us because we don't believe that we have it coming. That it's a gift that we should receive, that God wants to give us. We think it's something that's earned. And therefore we can't get it. Because it comes by grace and only by grace. Praise the Lord. That's the worst kind of cursing, amen, that there is. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I talked about some things Sunday that... I mean, I hope it resonated with some people, but this is radical what we're talking about. If we really understand it, it's radical. Jesus was radical. Amen? And unless we get radically saved, I mean, to where we really believe every promise in here is ours, then it's hard for us to receive it. Come on. Amen? We're not living by faith. We're living by laws. We're living by rules. And that negates the grace of God. It stops the grace of God from, from bringing to us what He so wants to give us. If He gave us His Son, the most precious thing that He had, why would He not with Him freely give us all things, the Scripture says? Praise the Lord. That's new cars. Amen? That's a new truck. How about, imagine, not only did He give you the vehicle, or, or make possible the vehicle for it, but suppose that happened to you somewhere between here and the Dakotas, or where you were going, you know? Exactly. So, His timing is perfect. Yes. It doesn't always look perfect to us because we're in, in this time frame, you know? But He's outside of time. And He knows exactly when and how to do everything that blesses us in the best ways. Amen. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Praise the Lord. And so, yes, we need to study. But it's what we need to study that's at issue here tonight. We need to be able to tell the difference between what is truth, between the Old Covenant, what's relative to the Old Covenant, and what is truth relative to the New Covenant. Amen? Amen? Are you with me? Praise the Lord. The Old Covenant disapproves of you. Right. You read the Old Covenant, all you find is what you're not capable of doing. Right. Where you fail, where you come short. Amen? And it disqualifies you for the blessings of God. Read Deuteronomy where He gives you all these promises, all these blessings. And I mean, you look at it and you go, man, I, I, that's what I'm looking for, right? But then He says, but if you fail to obey, what do you get? You don't get any of this. What you get is a bunch of curses. Well, Jesus totally fulfilled the law. He completely and perfectly obeyed God so that now we're only on the blessed side of this thing. We only get what those promises are for us because in Christ, we've been judged righteous, perfect, and holy. So all of these promises now become ours by faith. So you see what I'm saying? If you're not operating in faith, then you... Don't get the promises, not because God doesn't want to give them to you, not because He doesn't desire to just pour you out a blessing you can't even contain, but because we resist it, thinking that I haven't lived up to the standard, I haven't kept all the rules, I've come short, I've failed, or what have you. So, the New Covenant shows how, to, how you, not only that you are approved, but it shows how you got approved, amen, and how you are accepted in the Beloved. And that is through Jesus Christ and His finished work. What He's already done. What He has completed on our behalf. 
It's not us. It's not what we're doing. It's what He has done. Therefore, if we operate by faith, if we believe what God has said about the finished work of Christ, that's living by faith. That's walking by faith. That qualifies us for every promise of God. Man, this is great news. This is, this is what makes Christianity exciting. Not just that we get stuff, but that we are righteous, that we are set apart, that we are God's loved, that we are His, His children. Amen. And He wants to just bless us. In every way. Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. The whole purpose of the law was to conclude that everybody is a sinner. That was the reason for the law. To show that everybody was under sin. Why? So that he could then have mercy on everybody. Uh, Praise the Lord. Look at this. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 22. See the law was good. If, it was, if it's used for what it's intended for. It's used to bring us to the end of ourselves. It's used to bring us to a place where we go, hey, I'm a sinner and I can't do anything about it. Then we turn to God and now He can show mercy on us. Praise the Lord. But the Scripture have concluded all under sin. That why does, it, why does it conclude that? So that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Praise the Lord. It's designed to bring us to Christ after religion has worn us out. After we are exhausted from trying to do the stuff that we can't do and frustrated, and many people have left, you know, the faith, so to speak, simply because they couldn't do the stuff. Right. And, and they get frustrated and then they beat themselves up and they get discouraged and think, what's the point? I just go and get frustrated because I can't do all the stuff I'm supposed to do. That, the reason for that was to bring us to a place where we wouldn't run away from God, but where we would run to God and then He could give us mercy. Uh -huh. Give us all the things that He has promised us. Amen? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the gospel of the grace of God. Jesus Christ. It's the person and the work of Jesus that brings us into this grace. It's what He's done, not what we do. It's what He's done that makes grace available to us. In fact, you've probably heard it said, as I have, that grace is not a thing, it's a person. Right. It's Jesus Himself. So I'm, I'm just speaking now. I'm not working to get salvation. I'm working out of that finished work. I'm working out of the fact that I'm saved. I'm not working to get saved. I'm already saved. So any work that I do is not about getting something from God. It's just the result of what I believe. You see what I'm saying? I'm not doing to be I already be. <laughs> Amen. I already am. So I'm not trying to get there. I am. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. He hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Just look at that. He has, God is, hath raised, hath is Something important here. It's past tense. We already are. We've been raised up together and sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So the location of this heavenly land is in Christ. Where we just read in Hebrews 4 that they didn't enter in. Why? Because of unbelief. Right? Well, we have been placed in this place and this place is Christ. That's the heavenly place we're talking about. Amen? Half, as I said, past tense. It's and where is that place? Far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominions. Yes. Praise the Lord. We have authority over the devil. We have authority over the, the enemy and, and, and how he comes against us. I'll tell you, in these, in these days that we're living right now, there is more strife. I mean, it's incredible. I'm talking to people all the time in this church and other, and, uh, other areas, people that I interact with all, on a regular basis. And everybody's dealing with this. Yep. 
it's like it just comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden people are cross purposes and they're angry and they're frustrated and they're mad at each other Christians that's the enemy yep. because he knows when you're in strife you don't you, you, you listen I don't know about anybody else but you ever have a, a, a really bad argument with your spouse you don't feel like there's many blessings coming <laughs> I mean it, it makes you sick it really does because it's just not you Right? Yep. I'm not prophesying either. I'm just saying it happens to all of us. If you're married, you're going to have some issues. I mean, you're going to have some differences and disagreements. Praise the Lord. And if you say you won't, well, God bless you. I'd like to have a little counseling from you. Praise the Lord, because I could use it. Now, uh, my wife and I, we've got a great marriage. We've been married almost 38 years. But listen, we still have disagreements from time to time. And, you know, if you're tired and you're down and you're kind of going through some other pressures and stuff, a lot of times you can say stuff and act and, and tone it in a way that, boy, it can just escalate in no time. And it isn't, it isn't because it was intended. It's just things kind of come together at a time where it just doesn't look good. It just doesn't seem good. Amen. And it happens not only between husbands and wives. It happens between children and parents. It happens between uh, our parents and us, it happens between neighbors, co-workers, all this stuff. It's just the way the devil works. It's how he gets in there to disqualify us for the blessings of God, for what God wants to do for us. And that's why we have to live out of our salvation, who we are in Christ, and not striving for that, or we're always going to feel that we're coming short. So therefore, God cannot bless me. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I promise you, if, as we begin to understand this and live out of this salvation more and more, we'll have less strife too. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Because you, you know God's going to take care of it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, Ephesians 1.3. Helping anybody tonight? Praise the Lord. I'm, just, I'm preaching to me tonight. Now, my wife's not at home because we had a big fight. I'm telling you. Before God. It's about pepper jelly. Really is. If she's hot, it's only because of the pepper jelly. So, bless his feet. Well, I don't know. If I didn't mean that that way. I just mean she's angry. So, she's hot to me. You know. This is really going sideways, isn't it? Praise God. You know, it can get out of control in a hurry. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Yes. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We've already found out we're, we're in heavenly place. We're in Christ. Right? We are already where a lot of folks are dying to be. Literally. Yep. Because they don't know that they have access to it right this minute. Right here and right now. We have died and gone to heaven. We were cruci crucified with Christ. We were buried with Christ. We have risen and now are seated at the right hand of God. We are already seated in heaven. Come on. In heavenly places. Amen. You are dead. The scripture says you are dead and your life is hid in Christ. In God. Come on. So we are citizens of heaven. As citizens of heaven, we have rights and privileges. Yep. Just like citizens of the United States have certain rights and certain privileges. Citizens of heaven have rights and privileges. Mm -hmm. You have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a heaven in our future. I'm just saying we don't have to work and work and work and work till we die physically to enjoy the benefits of being a citizen of heaven. Come on. We have it right now. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Amen. The only requirement is faith. That's why the law is so such a curse because it shuts up faith yep. and the only way we access our our uh, citizen rights our benefits from heaven is by faith is by believing that we qualify for it yes. that we have a right to it mm -hmm. 
That's not being greedy. That's not being egotistical or self-centered. That's what God. That's the way God set the thing up. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. The only requirement is faith. Mm -hmm. When we believe and we trust Him, we'll rest. We'll rest. Amen. We won't work. We'll just rest and receive. John six twenty nine. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. You want to work? You got this thing about you got to work? Here's work, the work of God. Believe on Him mm -hmm. and whom He sent. That's the only work we've got. There you go. Everything else He has finished. Mm -hmm. That's why the just shall live by faith. We believe. All right, Matthew 28. 18 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, here's what, in the context of what we're talking about here this evening, here's what Jesus is saying. We have to be more than kingdom consumers. Now, you can't do this without being a consumer. You can't give something you don't have. Right. So, we, by faith, we have to be receiving what God has promised us mm -hmm. in order for us to give it away. Because we, we're not supposed to just be consumers. We are supposed to consume what God's promises have offered to us, what the benefits of heaven are. Why? So that we can then give it away. There you go. Praise the Lord. We're not just to be consumers. We need to be kingdom exporters. Mm -hmm. And you can't export something you haven't received. There's something you can't, something you don't consume, you cannot export to somebody else, right? That's right. So this is a two-edged sword. On the one hand, we, need, we, we want to be blessed. We need to be blessed. There are things that we need to have that we can't get on our own. That's right. But we don't have the, you know, either our, our job doesn't pay enough for that, or this, you know, we're going through some other financial thing, or our emotional condition isn't such that we can, you know, relate to everybody the way we should or what have you. So we're supposed to receive from God. Therefore, we can now export it to others. Uh -huh. We can give it to somebody else. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 10. So it's not, you can understand it's not being greedy because, sure, God wants to overflow us with blessings so that the overflow can go to others. Right. So that we can then be a blessing to other people. Right. Spiritually as well as in other ways. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. See that? That's us. When he shall be glorified in us and to be admired in all of them that believe. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Yes. The Old Covenant was a time to be born, right? It says, there were, in the Old Covenant, there was a time to be born and a time to die. Look at, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 2. A time to be born and a time to die. It's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. In the New Covenant, He has abolished death. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 4. Time to weep, time to laugh, time to mourn, and a time to dance. All right, that's Old Covenant, right? Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. I, I know I've lost a sister and a brother, mother and father. So I know about a couple of grandchildren. So I know people die, right? But this is not talking about what the enemy can take from us. This is talking about the will of God, okay? Under the Old Covenant, he said, you will mourn. There's a time for mourning, right? Time for weeping. Under the New Covenant, he says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm-hmm. This is the God we're dealing with. This is the new covenant we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? 
Old Covenant, it says there is a, a time for war. Right? right? Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9, which is New Covenant. Old Covenant, time for war. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. In the Old Covenant, there's a time to kill. In the New Covenant, there's a time to heal. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11, Mike. And just leave it up on the screen. Because it'll be our last scripture. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Let's look at it again. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. God is outside of time. But he has made all things beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. The word world here is the Hebrew word olam, and it translates age. So the age that we're living in, not, not the globe we're on, but the age in which we live. Mm -hmm. So no man can find out what the work is that God makes from the beginning to the end. Because under the Old Covenant, no one understood the finished work of the cross. Mm. Praise the Lord. The cross was the work that God made from the beginning to the end, before the foundation of the world. Because the plan of redemption that began in Genesis was finished on Calvary. He is Alpha Omega, beginning and end. Mm -hmm. So they were locked into this roller coaster ride of living and dying, war and peace, mourning and dancing, working, striving, having a little, losing it, trying to get it again, struggling all the time, both sides of this thing. And then in the New Covenant, we are living in His time. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah, hallelujah. This is a new age. This is a new world. This is a, this is a new covenant. It's a covenant of grace covenant of Christ. So we're living in His time. And everything is beautiful in His time. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that needs to be exported. In order to export it, we need to receive it. Amen. And you only receive it one way, and it's by grace. Amen. I want a beautiful time. And I want that to be shared. I want to be able to share that with other people. And the only way we can do that is by escaping the law. And living under grace. Amen. By entering in to Christ. Amen. Into His rest. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. So, look up. It's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Praise God. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate your patience. Thanks again for being here tonight. Trust the Lord. He's a good God. He's got a good plan for you. And some real blessings. Just open up your heart and say, I'm qualified. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again. God bless you all. Hope to see you back here Sunday. If not, have a great week and go to church someplace. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.